Alright, this is part four on the uh, study of parabolas. Alright, in the previous videos we've, we've talked about a standard form that the equations to look at, and we could read off the vertex. And once you read off the vertex, then you can do the axis of symmetry, and then you can go find the C, and you can figure out the focus. All right, that was all great if you were in that standard form, right? If your equation was in that standard form. So now the dilemma is going to come from, can we find the vertex, the axis of symmetry, the focus, directrix, domain, and range, if our equation is not written in that standard form, the HK form, if uh, if you will. So our goal is to actually take this equation and do some algebra on it to put it into that form that we talked about in the previous videos. All right? Well, the way to do that is the process of completing the square. All right. So everybody remember completing the square. All right. So here's the plan. All right, since we've got y equals you know, x squared here, that's what the equation is. All we know is that this is a parabola that opens either up or down, because we've got y and, and x squared. And since the leading coefficient here is po positive, we know that the parabola opens up. But that's all we know. This, this thing opens up. Now we want to figure out the vertex, and then obviously the focus would be important, uh, and then uh, the axis of symmetry and directrix. All right? So let's take this, and we're going to complete the square on the x's. All right, so we're going to leave this y alone. You want the coefficient of your squared term to be a 1. Right? So right now it's a 3, so we've got to factor that 3 out. And we're going to factor the 3 out of just the, t the two terms that have x's in there, right? We're not, not the constant term. So that's going to look like this, and then close it off. And this plus 5, we're just going to push it down the road here a little bit, right? That plus 5 is just going to sit out there. All, so all we've done is just taken this first line here and just rewrote it a different way. All right, so now our goal is uh, inside the parentheses here to complete the square, to make this a perfect squared trinomial. And in order to do that, remember the leading coefficient here needs to be a 1. That's why we factored this 3 out, so we would have a 1 in front of this x squared term. All right, so everybody remember how to complete the square? Right, so you do 1 half times the coefficient of this middle term here, and it doesn't really matter if this is a plus or a negative for the coefficient, just take the number, 2. So 1 half times 2, which gives you 1, and then you take that number and square it, and get a new number, and that's the number that we're going to add, plus 1. Right, by adding that 1, that makes this a perfect squared trinomial. It's going to factor here in just a second. <clears throat> but you can't just add 1 you know, to this you know, inside there like that. that. That changes the entire value, right? So, first question is, did we really add 1 to this side? No, we didn't, because if you distribute this 3 through, we really added 3 times 1, which is 3. That's really what we've added to this side. All right, so we got the plus 5 sitting over here. So, to compensate, we're going to subtract 3 from this side, because adding in 3 and subtracting 3, that's really a fancy way to write the number 0, and adding 0 to anything gets you back what you started with, right? You don't, it doesn't change the value. It's the same idea as adding 3 to both sides and then subtracting the 3 and bringing it over here. We're just doing everything on one side. Uh, one way to think about this is whatever number you put inside here to complete the square on the trinomial, take that number, multiply by whatever you have outside the parentheses here that you factored outside, multiply that together, and then add the opposite of that total uh, outside here at the very end. Okay, and we'll see another example here in just a second where I'll talk about that again. All right, so now... By adding in this 1, it automatically makes this trinomial factor into x plus 1 squared. It's the letter that you're playing with, the sign of the middle term, and then whatever number you squared. All right? And then over here, we're going to have 5 plus 3 gives you 2. And now it's written in our standard form. Now we can read off what the vertex is. All right? So the vertex would be negative 1, 2. I see that? The axis of symmetry would be, since it opens up, it's going to be x equals the x part of the vertex, which x equals negative 1. Um, what, do we need, what do we still need to find? All right, we need to find the focus. All right, so to find the focus, we need to find c. Now remember, 3 should be equal to 1 over 4c. And that implies that c is equal to 1 twelfth. So that means then that the focus, all right, well, let's see, this thing opens up. Right, so here's the vertex, and here's the focus. So what changes between the vertex and the, and the focus? Right, the y value is changing. So the, the focus is going to be the x part stays the same, but the y value goes uh, 2 plus your c. So 2 plus 1 twelfth. And that goes to negative 1 and 25 twelfths would be the focus. Right? And the directrix? The directrix would be 
uh, it'd be a horizontal line, right? <clears throat> a horizontal line. So y equals uh, the y part of the vertex minus the c value, and so y equals 23 twelfths. Okay, so last thing to find, domain. All right, so since it opens up, it goes forever right, forever left. It's all real numbers. And the range, well, uh, what's the vertex? Vertex is negative 1, 2. All right, so this point here is negative 1, 2. And it opens up. So the lowest y value is 2. So 2 to infinity would be the range. All right, let's try one more. All right, so here, all we know is that it's going to open which way? Since it's x equals y squared, it opens right or left. And since that leading coefficient is negative, it's going to open left. All right, so now let's complete the square. All right, so x equals, you want the coefficient of the squared term here to be 1. So we need to factor that negative 4 out of the first, out of the two terms that have the y's, and then minus 3. Everybody see that? All right, so then we would have... All right, so y squared plus y. What are we going to add? Well, go off to the side and do 1 half times the coefficient of what's getting, getting ready to be your middle term. Don't worry about its sign. Just take the number. All right, so 1 half times 1 is 1, is one half. And then 1 half squared is 1 fourth. So 1 fourth is what we have to add. But did we really add a 1 fourth to that side? <clears throat> no, we really added negative 4 times 1 fourth, which is a negative 1. So we really added a negative 1 to this side. So remember, whatever you put in here to complete the square, multiply um, it by whatever you have out in front. So negative 4 times 1 fourth gives you negative 1, and then add the opposite of that number outside the parentheses over here. And that's your fancy 0 that you're adding to, to the right side there. All right, so then we have x equals negative 4. This factors into y, and then the sign of the middle term is plus. And what number did you square to get the 1 fourth? Well, that was a half squared, and then minus 2. So we know the vertex is... Now be careful. Since this opens on its side, what's the h value? Remember, h goes with the x's, k goes with the y. So the vertex this time is negative 2 for the h value, and negative 1 half for the y value, for the k value. Everybody see that? Be very careful, that's where, that's where common errors are made. Right, is having them, is having them backwards. Right, since we know that, we know the axis of symmetry. And so the axis of symmetry here is, since this is, since this is a parabola that opens uh, to the left, it's a horizontal line, so y equals the y part of the vertex, which is negative 1 half. So now we gotta figure out the focus and the directrix. And how do you figure out the focus in the directrix? You need to find c. So 1 over 4c has to equal all right, that coefficient, which is negative 4. So that implies that c is negative 1 16th. Since the parabola opens left vertex, the focus is here. So we're going to be adding the c value to the x part of the vertex. So negative 2 plus negative 1 16th, comma, negative 1 half, so that ends up giving us negative 33 sixteenths, comma, negative 1 half. All right, so then the directrix, so this would be a vertical line for the directrix. So x equals uh, the x part of the, of the vertex minus the c value. All right, and so x equals, well, it would be negative 31 sixteenths. All right, so the only thing left is the domain and range. Since this is a parabola that opens on its side, opens to the left, all right, in this point right here, the vertex is negative 2, negative 1 half, then what do you think the domain would be? That's right, all numbers less than negative 2. And then the range, since it goes forever up and forever down, the range would be all real numbers. All right, so uh, that's the idea on taking any, uh, an equation that's not written in our standard form for parabola and uh, using completing the square to actually write it in that form. I know you thought you were done with completing the square once you learned the quadratic formula way back when, but no, completing the square is a wonderful uh, tool that helps us take equations and write them in other forms so then we can read off all this information. We're going to do the same thing with the ellipse and the same thing with the hyperbola. Study well, and please let me know if you have any questions.